Hi guys, welcome to another video. On this video, I'm going to be trying to survive on what's in this kit. It's the uh, Polymath Products uh, Premium Survival Kit. I have done a, a quick unboxing of this on a previous video. I'll leave a link in the description. So water is, uh, is, is a key thing in survival. Three minutes without wear, I don't know if you're all aware, some of you may not be. Three minutes without air, you die. Three, three days without water, you die. Three weeks without food, you die. So uh, I've just got the, the bag, the water bag out of the, uh, out of the kit. This is a one litre, one litre bag. So uh, I'm just gonna try and get some water out of the river here. It is in flood. We've just had Storm uh, Kira and Storm Dennis. And we're expecting more today, so uh, and tonight. Up to 40 mile an hour winds tomorrow. Heavy rain forecast for tonight. So we'll, we'll do our best with what's in the kit. So let's get some water. I say it's a one litre bag. It's a Ziploc, Ziploc system. There we go. One litre of water. Ideally you want to be looking at two litres of water a day. But we're just using what's in the kit. So one litre of water. And uh, let's crack on. Okay, so in the kit, we get uh, some water purification tablets, two, four, six, eight, ten. So 10 litres, two litres a day, that's five days. So what I'm going to do is just tear one off. Now this bag should, because of its design, should stand upright. And it does. So it's uh, one litre of water, one tablet, plop that in there, leave it for 20 minutes and then it's good to go. Right, so uh, one thing that the kit doesn't have is a cutting tool in it. So um, I've got an idea. Uh, I found this little bit of a rocky outcrop and I'm just going to scout around and find a kind of a palm sized flat stone. Right, okay, so the situation is, um, and this is a real life situation. It's been raining since I set off when I was doing the filming down by the river and all that. It was, it was trickling, but it wasn't proper rain. Uh, it's it come on a bit heavier. The wind's picked up. Um, we're, we've just gone through Storm Kieran, Kira and Storm Dennis. Looks like we're going into another one. Um, high winds for tonight. Uh, up to 40 to 60 mile winds tonight and the same tomorrow. Um, so my original idea was to go deep into the woods and, and film this video but I'm not going to risk my own life going down into the woods there's trees falling everywhere I'm not talking twigs I'm talking big trees they're, they're falling down everywhere the winds picking up so I've just basically brought some a little bit of safety gear it's it, even that that it's not very much so I've got the 3d uh, the, th the 3d the DD 3x3 magic carpet tarp uh, just pinned out into a uh, into a lean-to configuration and I've put uh, another tarp up um, so that I can basically film under it without the camera getting wet um, so everything is sodden now the ground I don't like personally sleeping just on the ground I've done it before in the past not very comfortable so I'm going to utilize some of the kit we're going to get some ferns we're going to put them them in here even though they're going to be wet through it's going to afford me a little bit of, of uh, 
comfort in the night. I may get some twigs and, and stack them up at, uh, at the sides so that uh, it helps with the wind a little bit. Um, I am at the bushcraft camp so there is things around here that I can use. Um, I may have a, a fire later on uh, but we're going to we're going to see how the fire lighting kit works in here how good that is um, yeah so there's a lot a lot to be thinking about now just uh, going back to the survival kind of thing i've already gone through the three uh, the three threes the rule of threes which is uh, three minutes without air three three uh, days without water three weeks without food generally depending on the person um, there's also another acronym which uh, John Lofty Wiseman uses, which is PLAN, uh, P-L-A-N, um, protection. So I've sorted that aspect out and location, I've sorted that. So the p &L, I've sorted that out already. Uh, I made sure I've got afforded myself a little bit of protection, I'm in the right location. I'm not going to put myself in immediate danger with a tree falling down on me in the middle of the night because the wind's picked up. Uh, acquisition we've already done, we've got our water and I've got the stone. Um, I'll show you what I'm going to use that for in a little bit. Uh, navigation will come later when we when we try and uh, leave the area. So yeah, let's crack on. I'm gonna the first bit of kit actually I'm gonna use is or the second bit should I say because we've already used a little bit of the kit already is the uh, emergency blanket. Now what I'm planning on doing is uh, opening this up, turning it inside out and then uh, I can use this to collect some ferns and then when I turn it the right way around, the right, you know, the other way around again, uh, I'm going to be okay to get in, in it uh, to sleep in it. Um, I have slept in these things before, they do condensate quite a lot, it wasn't a very comfortable sleep uh, last time I was using one of these. Um, you know, it, this is all about uh, polymath and what they put in their kit. Um, I mean, you've got a little bit of paper there, yeah, you could keep that, you could burn it. Um, yeah, it, it, you know, I, I don't want to mod the kit. I didn't want to mod the kit. I wanted to use it as it is and see how far we get. Uh, and then in a future video, um, I'll be putting together a video of what I would put in the kit. Because um, I can see some shortfalls in the kit already without using it. So, uh, yeah, I'm beginning to waffle. So, first job of the day. Like I say, we're losing light now. We're not losing it particularly, it's just the rain clouds, it's all grey, it's all miserable. Um, so let's turn this uh, this thing inside out. It has got uh, tape seams by the look of it. And it is quite long as well. Okay, so that's kind of, uh, that's folded inside out. Now I can use that to fill it with stuff from a bedding. Okay, so that's the bed sorted. Um, you use what's around you, and, and I've seen uh, so many survival so-called experts saying you've got to do everything fast, you've got to do it in order, you've got to do this, that, and the other. 
you're an individual you, you, you're planning for your own survival uh, like I say P-L-A-N it's a plan um, use what's in your natural environment don't go rushing into things stop think assess your situation assess what's around you what can you use that's around you I know this woodland quite intimately so I know pretty much all its resources but in a survival situation, you're also, you're also going to have what's on your person and whatever's in your kit. So you utilise everything. Like, for example, I know that my keys for my house are in here, which are an everyday carry. And on them keys is my old light EDC little little flashlight with a, with a full battery in it. So use what's around you. You know, when you're in a survival situation, you're not playing a game. You are trying to survive. We all want to see our loved ones again. Um, some some people do make mistakes in a survival situation and it doesn't end very well but if you just you know pay attention to your surroundings most most importantly get your protection it's not very much but it's better than nothing so protection choose your right location as I've said previously in the video we don't want to be down in the woods when you know there's 40 mile an hour to 60 mile an hour winds it's knocking trees down like the matchsticks you don't want to be down there I've come into an area up to the bushcraft camp where I do all my bushcraft videos from all these trees in this area are all pretty much saplings so they're not gonna the, tr the winds just gonna go past them it's not gonna try and well it will bend them to a degree but it's not gonna bend them uh, quite as much as some of the heavier ones some of the fully grown ones deeper in the woods so right we've got the bed sorted out now just doing just getting here and doing this little bit of filming I'm already beginning to feel dehydrated we have picked up some water so the next thing is I'm going to empty the tin into a bag that I've got and I want to uh, try something out of the kit so the kit's just been left out in the open not even in the tarp under the tarp so you can see it's uh, got a little bit of rain on it the, the seal has worked it's bone dry inside all the kits dry so what I'm going to do is just empty the kit into this dry bag that I've got and the reason will become apparent in a minute and keep that out because I'll uh, I'll need to do something with that. Right, where is it? The, uh, there it is, missed it. So uh, what I've just got out is Is this which is a hydration treatment um, obviously I've emptied the tin out because I want to put some water in there so it replaces lost fluid uh, following diarrhea I haven't got diarrhea um, and it replaces uh, fluids and body salts so uh, let's read the instructions before we start using it contents with 200 millilitres of water so probably about probably about that much on the bag now I haven't got a cup so that's why we're using the uh, the mess the mess tin if you can get into the bag he says there we go now yeah this as you saw before I did drop uh, one of the purification tablets in here and um, it's had well over a half an hour to, uh, to do its business and to kill all the viruses, bacteria, that kind of thing. Um, it is quite a sturdy bag, that as well. Right, so let's uh, stop waffling. I haven't got a clue what this tastes like. I don't even know what it looks like, what colour it is. It's just a white powder. Put it in there. Smells of lemon yeah smells of lemon no need to use a stirrer uh, you know the spatula that comes in the kit just uh, mix it up with this that's all dissolved okay let's uh, see what it tastes like
just like a mild lemon taste to it. <sighs> Doesn't taste bad at all. In fact, it's quite sweet. So I originally brought the stone up to sharpen one of the edges on the stove that's provided in the kit, thinking that I could make a knife. Now, yeah, I probably could. But for argument's sake, let's just, uh, let's just try and cut the cordilage. I've got something flat here, so not, uh, the, the, the tin, the lid off the tin. So let's just try and cut the cordilage just with the, the stove itself. Because there's no cutting tool provided in the kit. And it is cutting it. So I would say, yes, that's a success. It's cut the cordilage. We don't need it to be very neat. We're in a survival situation. So if you just use the edge, either one of these edges, um, I'd use the long ones personally. Uh, yeah, so you can cut the cordilage with the stove. So I'm just going to turn my attention to three more items that are in the kit. We've got the button compass. We've got uh, an LED torch. Can we make that stay on? Yeah, so there's a little tiny little switch at the top that can make it stay on like that or obviously press down. Good, good for signalling. Um, so we have the, the little torch and we have this which is a whistle. Always good in a survival situation. Um, for those who don't know, uh, it's uh, SOS is three dots, three dashes, three dots. Um, now, I don't want to lose any of this gear, so what I'm going to do is try and feed it all onto the lanyard provided. That one might be a little bit more difficult. There we go. So I've got uh, got them all on the uh, the lanyard now for the compass. <coughs> I've checked this compass myself against another compass, and it, it is it is uh, it does read quite true. It, well, not quite. It does read true. Gives you the cardinal directions: north, east, south, west. Um, the whistle, which is at this end, also has. A ferrocerium along the ferrocerium rod along the side. I've I have already taken some of the black layer off to uh, so I can get down to the cerium. Yeah, it does work. You know, that simply just clips into there. I think it's one way only. There we go. Just push that little bit down to get it out or it'll just snap out on its own. Um, yes, you could keep that on the on the necklace. I personally would prefer to keep it in a zip pocket. This is the only thing you have to start a fire um, in this kit. So you don't want to be losing this. Also in the kit as part of first aid you get uh, these pre-injection swabs. 90% IP, uh, IPA alcohol so I'm just going to rip one of these open and see how readily it'll take a spark from the ferrocerium rod they are quite small let's just try this first okay There we go, it's going. So you could use this as part of a fire if you're struggling to get a fire going with the jute twine that's in the kit, is a bag of jute. Next we have the stove. Now I've uh, looked in the instructions uh, just to say to bend these two flat ones obviously because they've got the flattest surface uh, in the downward position and then bend these up. How many times you could do this and lay it flat and then work it up again. I don't think it's going to be that many. I think this is going to be kind of a, uh, a 
you know once you've made it it's got to stay in that kind of configuration otherwise it's going to friction hard the steel and uh, it's just going to snap um, so the idea being with the stove we get some exo gel that we can either squirt into the middle just quickly read the back of it hold the flame to the gel it does take a while for it to get going the gel I do know that shield from the wind flame may be invisible um, wash away any spillages with water it's non-toxic indefinite shelf life not suitable for consumption basically so yeah we get the uh, the little stove and the gel I've seen people put a little bit of gel on on the plate itself but I've also seen people try and use the the holder that the candle comes in they've taken that out they put a little bit of gel in there and then they put the pot on top now let me have a quick look underneath the problem with using this I don't know if the camera is going to pick this up the problem with using this is it's very when, once you put the pot on it's going to be flush obviously the flame is going to go out so how can we rectify that what I'm going to do is just going to bend it down a little bit like this then we've got a holder for our gel so we can put some gel in there now alright it's not the sturdiest thing in the world this there you go, that's a bit more sturdier. So now once I put when I put a pot on there, it's not gonna drift, it's not gonna dampen the uh, the flame down once we've got it going. I'm gonna squeeze a bit of this in here, just get rid of that ring there. Now in order to light this, again we're going to use the ferrocerium rod and we're going to use some jute twine. Okay, so I think the fuel is now lit. Yeah, I think that's I think that's pretty much going now. So let's uh, let's see if we can boil some water up and see what state the tin's in afterwards. So we've got a little bit of uh, water left for, for a drink later on. So what, uh, what the instructions suggest is instead of placing the lid in the normal way as you would do like that, um, put it on like that so you're not damaging the, the rubber seal. Let's just leave that and let's see if we can bring it to the boil. Right guys, it's not managed to get a rolling boil using that method. Um, 
it has actually gone out. It's left a little bit of residue on the bottom there. Um, this isn't a recommend. This isn't the recommended way to use the kit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it the way that they say. Squirt some gel onto the base. I don't know if you guys can see that, but uh, it does not like the wind, this stuff. And it is spreading a little bit. Right, I'd say that's going. So let's try again. This is the way that it says in the instructions to use the kit. Let's try that. We need a rolling boil. Basically, if it can't do that, it's failed in my opinion. Most bacteria is killed off after 75 degrees. The rolling boil that all the survivalists tell you to watch out for is only a visual aid. Um, it's a visual aid, 100 degrees, pretty much 99% of bacteria is killed off. Just move it back a little bit out of the way so we can burn it. So using the kit in the recommended way, we have got more area. It does appear that the liquid actually solidifies when it gets heat to it. But that's a lot better flame, in my opinion, than using the, um, the candle holder. So let's see if we can bring it to the boil. Right, we have a failure guys. It's not boiled the water. That's the residue that's left. Let's get that leaf out of there. That's the residue that's left. It's... I'm sorry, but it's just not working for me. Um, I've done it exactly what he said. I am in a survival situation. Yes, it's raining. Yes, it's windy. I've got nothing to shield it with properly. Um, so the gel has actually failed for me. On its own, as a fire starter, with twigs and things, or even with the spatula that they, the wooden spatula they give you in the kit, I still think you'd struggle. Right, so I'm not mucking about, I need this water boiled. Let's see if it can stand up to uh, a hexamine block, if I can get it lit without burning my fingers. Right, it might bend, warp the, um, let's get that one properly. It might bend and warp the metal, I don't know. Again guys, if you get one of these, uh, not just the, this particular one, but if you are going to get a survival kit, you know, you need to try it out before, you need to, before you're in the survival situation. Right, I trust hexamine blocks, even in wind like this. Let's get that on. Put the lid back on and see how we go. Okay, so there's the hexamine block underneath. It's burning a lot more uh, ferociously. It's, uh, the wind's not affecting it too much. I can usually boil one litre of water on half a block. I've put a full block on here. Yes, the wind's blowing it about a little bit. It's not blowing it out or anything like that. Again, it's not brought it to a rolling boil. It's created steam. It's a lot hotter than using the gel. Um, there is bubbles beginning to form, so it is getting to close to 100 degrees. I'd be quite happy with that, using that water, if it was um, out of a stream. Uh, and this is the only way I had of purifying the water. So what I'm gonna do is I've seen lots of people, you know, test this drinking chocolate. Um, not seen many people try the stock cube. The stock cube also contains salt. I don't know what flavour it is. I think it's a vegetable one. Um, so let's give that a go and I'll bring you back and give you a verdict of what it tastes like. This might be the occasion where I need the, uh, the wooden spatula out of the kit. Now what I'm going to do is just take this off the flame 
it's obviously the, this is going to be warm to the lips or hot to the lips so uh, I'm going to take it off the flame and then let it cool down just the rim so I can so I can drink it so what I'm going to do now this piece is dry I could use that as a uh, kindling start a fire right so the wind's just blown the rest of the hexamine out so that's the residue that's the residue off the, the hexamine block it's not warped it in any way uh, it's not warped the metal or anything like that so rather than use this exo gel yeah you do get it in the kit in my personal opinion it's not very good stuff I'm in a survival situation, I don't want to be messing about trying to get, you know, hot water or boiling water. Yes, granted, it's, it's, you know, it's windy, it's raining, everything's damp. But, you know, if I'm in a true survival situation, I need to get this water boiled or to get it to a temperature where I feel comfortable that it's, um, it's going to kill the bacteria. I don't want to be messing about and trying to get a fire lit with this. Now, I understand why polymath products don't use, um, Hexamine or other and other products in their kits. Again, it's shipping. It's it's the laws in this country. As stupid as it as the laws are, um, this is kind of safe fuel. Whereas the hexamine is not a safe fuel, or classed as not a safe fuel. So um, yeah, for me personally, take this out. I probably I will use the the rest of it um, in the future. Maybe when it's not so windy, uh, or I could even do an in indoor test. If you guys want to see an indoor test with this stuff, with this stove, same same kind of setup, uh, we could do that. Just leave in the comments if you'd like to see a, that video. But for me, uh, I'd leave this at home uh, and put a couple of hexamine blocks in in the kit. Okay, so it has cooled down a little bit. It's a vegetable stock cube. Um, it is, uh, like I say, it does contain salt, which will help out with any um, leg cramps, things like that, muscular cramps. Salt helps out with that. Some of the older subscribers will know that um, I'm a big fan of Oxo cubes. Just feel a little bit sticky under here. We'll investigate that in a minute. But yeah, it's hot, I can warm my hands up. Really, I should have my gloves on because they're, they're quite wet. Probably dry them out a little bit. It's mixed in quite well. There is a few little bits in there. Um, maybe carrots and, you know, little tiny flakes of carrot in there. So yeah. Like I say, the reason why I wanted to try that was because we all know what hot chocolate tastes like. Got you know, chocolate's got loads of energy in it. How much energy is in this? 390 calories in this sachet. Um, Cafe Express brand it is. So yeah, I'll keep that. We'll use it on a future video. Um, also get Kindle Kindle Mint cake. Now, uh, I could eat this as it is, or I could, uh, if I made a figure of four trap, I could use the sewing, a bit of the thread off the sewing kit that's in the, uh, in the survival kit. Take some of this, lap, lash it onto the, the actual trigger mechanism for the figure of four. May do something, it may not. I don't know if mice and rodents like uh, Kendall Mint, chocolate Kendall Mint cake. But it's one possibility, we're trying to broaden our chances of survival um, another thing with the cordage that's supplied in the kit you could make running running snares now I'm going to be doing uh, some primitive hunting uh, and survival uh, techniques to acquire food in the future in a future video you've already seen the bow and arrow one that I did you know yes it's very primitive the one that I made but it worked so yeah I'm not going to bang on too much about the fuel 
it is what it is. Um, there's reasons why Polymath products put it into this kit. It is, um, it is what they call air safe, so it can be taken on a plane. Like I say, whether your airline would let you take it on the plane, um, I don't know. Uh, but we are losing light a little bit. So in the kit you do get a, a glow stick. I don't know why I'm shaking it, I've not activated it yet. One little tip for a glow stick is to, is to put it under your arm for a few minutes, get it nice and warm. Um, it just helps the, the, the chemical bonding uh, happen a little bit more efficiently. So yeah, I'm, uh, I'm happy with the, this stove. Like I say, I don't know how many times you could bend it up and down, how many reusable times it is. I'm kind of getting the feeling that everything in this kit is kind of a use once kind of thing. I do have my own axe to grind with these kind of survival blankets. If you're going to spend some money on survival gear, really you want to be buying a breathable, a breathable survival blanket. Very similar to this in design, still with the foil inside, but they are breathable. However, they are very expensive for what they are. Um, we're talking 50, 60 quid and upwards for a breathable uh, survival survival bag. So, again, this kit is to be used in conjunction with other pieces of kit. It's only a survival aid. Right, stop waffling. Let's, uh, let's try this. So we snap it. Shake it, and I believe that these go for about eight hours. So there we can see we've got a nice, a nice glow now. use it like that you could probably read read with it so that's activated now I'm just going to hang it on the side of the tree here so I want to round this video up by saying um, a big th first of all a big thank you to polymath products for uh, sending me the kit uh, I will get back to you uh, in due course I'll send you an email um, you know, maybe we can tweak a, a few things in the kit. Maybe we can work, work together on this one. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, there is, in not just this kit, but in all survival kits, there's bits of kit that you won't use and there's bits of kit you will. I like the fact that you get a little bit of first aid in there. I like the fact that the alcohol swabs are, um, the alcohol swabs, I like the fact that the, the swabs are 70% uh, alcohol, which means, yeah, you can start a fire with them. Primarily, when you're talking about survival, you're talking about water and some way of heating that water up and getting yourself warm. So anything that will aid and help you do that in one of these kits gets the thumbs up from me. Um, as I've already said, the little button compass, great. It'll give you um, the cardinal directions. I do like the, the whistle ferrocene rod. It's like a dual purpose and I'm all for things that have got multi-purposes and the lights, the little LED, although we've not tested it fully and I don't know the actual runtime on it, but it, it's, it's probably enough to see where I'm going in full darkness. Um, I don't know, the, like I say, I don't know the lifespan of the battery or anything like that. Um, I don't want to like bang on too much now about individual bits of kits. I just want to round it all up, pros and cons. Yes, there's pros to having a kit like this and there is cons, um, but again, this is a last resort guys, you know, when you're in a survival situation, like I say, you're not playing games, you want to survive. Right, so, we're going to round it off there, thank you very much for watching, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, please like and subscribe, give me a thumbs up, if you're thinking about giving me a thumbs down, go to the shop, buy yourself something nice, or go camping and get yourself in a better mood. Alright guys, thanks for watching, I'll see you on the next one.